Hi, my name is Tom and welcome to another video regarding Big Picture. In this one, I want to talk to you about following the work progress in your projects, which of course is super important. Just this week, we've received two different inquiries regarding that, so we thought, why the hell not make a video about this? I will be showing you three separate areas which might be helpful in this regard. So the first one is the gun that we are looking at right now. The second one, we will also go to the resources module. And for the last one, we will also visit the board because I expect that some of you might be working with the Agile approach or might be thinking about switching to the Agile approach. Therefore, the board module should be of significance to you. Before I go into the details, please remember that Big Picture is our bread and butter. We are working with this amazing tool almost from the beginning and we are probably the most experienced experts in the world currently. So if you will want our help in terms of either implementing the tool or training or any kind of consulting, you will find the link to our webpage down below or the contact information as well. So don't hesitate to reach out to us for a free first session so that we can see how we can help you get the most out of this amazing tool or maybe convince your stakeholders into buying that. Following the work progress in Big Picture is not really that difficult, but sometimes it requires a little bit of an effort because you need to enable some settings, especially in the view section or, for example, in the resources, there is also a trick to actually following the workload in a specific way so that it shows you when something is lagging behind, something meaning a task assigned to a person. But let's stick to the gun for now. So I want you to focus your attention around this area. We have two tasks over here. Both of them are blue because they are in progress. So that's why the color is shown in blue. And what is special about these tasks and any other actually that you will see over here is that I've enabled over here the setting that allows me to show the progress of the task on the bars, right? So you will see that the color of those bars is not just pure blue, but it's darker blue at the beginning and lighter blue towards the end, right? And the same is over here. And that corresponds to the percentage of completion that you will see over here. I have a time tracking field enabled and I have 50% over here and 60% over here. So you can see that this is a little bit after the half of the task. This should be exactly in the middle of the task, right? So when you enable this, this is something that is going to give you a very good indicator regarding What's the progress of your task compared to what the progress should be according to how much time has already passed since this task should have been started, right? So, of course, if you are not going to be measuring that, you just want to see, for example, the tasks that are delayed, you could turn on another setting over here that says overdue, and when you turn it on, you will see that, for example, over here, I have some tasks that are marked as being laid by 10 days, 11 days, 8 days over here. But this definition is sometimes not perfect because these tasks are marked as delayed according to the fact that they should have been finished but are not finished yet, right? But these two tasks over here, and let me disable the overview, so these two blue tasks over here, they are not supposed to be finished yet, right? We can see the marker here, this one, this line going down here. This line is showing me where am I today, right? This is the marker that's always visible and it is showing me today, right? So we can see that according to today, these tasks shouldn't be finished yet, right? So they, they will never be marked as late, but that doesn't mean that the progress on these tasks is according to plan, right? And when you enable the progress that will be shown on a bar on the tasks, then you can immediately see when something is not as advanced as it should be or is maybe sometimes more advanced than it should be, right? So when we look at this task over here, we can see that it's completed up to here and then one, two more days have passed which are not marked with the darker blue color, right? So what does it tell us? Well, it tells us two things. Either the progress on this task is not as it should be, or someone has just reported the wrong hours, forgot maybe to log their work. That could also be the case. 
For this task, for example, we can see that dark blue color is actually on the right side of the marker showing me today, which means that the progress is better than we were expecting, right? So this one is absolutely all right. So this is the way to check the progress on the Gantt chart for those tasks that are, you know, longer and you just want to compare what's the current progress according to what the uh, progress should have been. So you're basically looking for this border of darker and lighter color and not necessarily blue because uh, these tasks might have been with marked different color, but every color will have two shades, right? So you're looking for the darker color to be more or less exactly where the today marker is because if it's on the left, like over here, it means that the task progress is not good enough. If I would, for example, go and now add some hours to this task, so I guess that we could add, for example, two more days as completed on the level of this task. We will go over here and we will say log work and we want to add two additional days like that and save and I'll go back to the previous screen. All right, and after coming back here, we can now see that this task is completed, right? Because there were just two remaining days on that task. I've logged those two days, so the remaining estimate is now zero. Therefore, there's no more work waiting to be completed on the level of this task. So it is completely filled up until the end. Doesn't really matter that the status of the task hasn't been changed. I should have maybe changed it as well, but it's not a big deal because this field is looking at the estimates and then the logged work, not really at the status itself. All right, so I hope that is clear. In a moment, I will switch to the resources module but in the background, I will also delete the log work that I've applied over here so that we have a little bit more interesting data to play around with. Okay, so in the resources module, we will be looking at the same two tasks. One is over here, the other one is over here. They're not as close to one another as before because they are assigned to different persons. So this one is assigned to Yaro, that one, number nine, is assigned to myself. Therefore, they are a little bit spread out, but that doesn't matter. What matters is that over here, when you look at the data like this, like I'm looking at it now, and to make it a little bit easier for you, I might get rid of the capacity. This is not really important or relevant for this example. You might be looking at, you know, how much hours are assigned to a specific person. The colors are, of course, telling me if the person is overloaded or not. I could turn this into percentages if it's maybe easier for you to look at. So we can see that this person, Yaro, is slightly overbooked, but we think that it will slide. And for over here, we can see that there is a definitely an area here when I am overbooked, but over here it looks fine, and before that it looks fine as well, so we probably need to just move this task around a little bit. But how does this really tell you what's the progress or if there is a problem with the progress on the task? Well, this kind of view will not tell you that yet. So what you have to do is you have to switch the effort mode from original estimate to remaining estimate. And if you switch the effort mode to the remaining estimate, something will happen. And look at this task. We can see over here that now these colors have changed, right? So if you remember previously, there was 102% all over the place. Now it's 71% everywhere until the very last day of the task, where it's suddenly 286% marked with red. This is your indicator that something is wrong with this task. And that's because with the remaining estimate mode, big picture now is telling you that, you know, in the past, this is what has already happened. And then it takes the remaining estimate and tries to apply it to any days that are still in the future of the task's duration, right? So if we know that the task duration is just one day into the future, there's the one day left to complete the task, and there are still many hours to be done, and this, you know, the task has to be completed by one person, then obviously it will then show me that the person's availability is highly overbreached. And of course, you know, if I would have been following this task or this view earlier, I would probably spot the problem earlier, so maybe two or three days ago. But now, you know, at least I can come here and see it before the task has actually been completed, and Big Picture signalizes that it's late in uh, with the overdue mark. So that's another way you can have a look at the work progress and find indication that something is wrong. Me personally, if I would be working the waterfall way, I would prefer to look at it in the Gantt view, so the previous option, 
But over here, this is also informative. So I usually recommend our customers that if you're doing the planning, working with the original estimate effort mode is absolutely okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It's even simpler and you know usually don't have any log work data anyway. But when the project is already in progress and you want to follow that progress, it's better to switch to the remaining estimate because you might be getting some more interesting data over here. But that of course depends on the way you are working with your project data, with your resources. So yeah, I don't want to get into a lot of details in that. If you are interested, reach out to us. We can have a chat about it. All right, last part for the people that are more into agile way of working. Good for you guys. Big Picture is a great tool for supporting the agile project planning, supporting the hybrid project planning as well. This is one of my favorite things about Big Picture. So you're definitely in the right place. If you go to the big picture board, this might be the view that you will get, right? So my training box project is now divided into stages. I have stage one over here, I have stage two over here. Here, I have a view of my tasks assigned to those stages, but also divided by different teams. So I have a BP82 team over here, I have example team, global team, and so on. Uh, we're actually interested only in this areas where you can see these task cards visible. The thing that we want to be looking at is the work progress visible over here, right? This is the thing that I'm interested in when I'm thinking about following how much of my stage in this case, right? We are looking at stages, how much of my stage has already been completed. Just to let you know, these things are enabled here. These are called totals and you can switch between work progress and capacity allocation. Capacity allocation should be used when you're planning so, for example, for stage two, I could turn on the capacity allocation and, whoa, I see that my team is highly overbreached with the tasks I've given them for stage two. Actually, the same thing happens here, but this is just a demo. So we didn't really make sure that the capacity is set up properly over here. We're just interested in the work progress. So if I switch to the work progress, I can see now stage in this case or any other box have been already completed. And again, you can look at it with hours or Mondays or story points. I've left story points over here because this is the probably best way to do the Agile, but it doesn't mean that you have to, right? So if you will be working with hours or Mondays, it's totally fine as well. And then basically it's telling me, okay, 33% is the current progress for team BP82 in stage one. Where is it coming from? Well, it's coming from story points, right? And I've enabled the story points over here. So on every task card, you will see how many story points are assigned to this task. So there's four, four, five, two, one, and five over here. By the way, there is a very quick inline edit available. So if I want to switch it to three, I can. And notice that this number is updating now from 21 to 19 because I've edited some data over here. Where is the seven coming from? Seven is coming from those tasks that have been completed, right? So look at the statuses, done and done. There are two tasks that have been done, two story points and five story points, seven in total, right? So this is where this is coming from. And now if the team would complete additional task, let's say this one worth three story points. So I will go ahead and mark this task as done over here. There we go. Come back to the previous screen refresh it nicely, you will see that the progress will jump from seven story points that we had before to 10 story points out of 19, because this is the current progress of the tasks in stage one in the project that we have. All right, it's loading slowly and there we go, right? 10 story points out of 19 and we have one, two and three tasks this time or three issues this time marked as done, so exactly what we just did. That would be all in terms of the work progress. There are, of course, specific circumstances where you have to think about how to set it up properly so that everything works for you the way it's intended. But other than that, I think that Big Picture does a really good job at presenting this information, especially when you consider that all of that information, so, you know, statuses, uh, work logs, can be coming from the team or, or team members that are actually performing this. And you don't have to be walking around and asking people, hey, what's the work progress, right? All they have to do is just change the statuses they should or report the time that they've spent on their tasks. And you will be getting as a project manager or any kind of person that is interested in the aggregated data, the up-to-date information regarding what's happening in your project, which is so awesome about Big picture or actually any other project management solution that is hooked up with the Jira environment. 
All right, that is all. Again, if you're interested in talking to us, all the information in the description of this video. But other than that, thank you a lot for watching and listening and see you or hear you in the next video.